Hey guys, CJ here, and welcome to episode 2 of our Forge 1.11 modding tutorials for 1.11.2. And in this episode, we're going to set up our basic handlers, and we'll see our mod in game. This is going to be a simple episode because I didn't actually prepare, and I completely forgot to prepare. So, you're just going to have to deal with that. Episode 3, we will begin by creating and texturing an item. In episode 2, wait a second, that doesn't add up. In episode 4, we will be creating and texturing our blocks. After that, it's anyone's guess as to what we're going to be doing. So, let's see. The basic event handlers... Oh, I also forgot. We're going to be doing proxies in this episode. Proxies are fun. You'll love them. They're fantastic. They let you run code either on the client or specifically the client and specifically the server or both. It's great. Now, let's see. We're going to create our event handlers. And uh, let's create pre-init first because it seems to be the one that is used the most. Now in pre-init, we're going to have an FML pre-initialization event, if you can spell it right. And we'll just call that variable E, like that, because we can. And now, this is an event handler. Boom. Was that so difficult? I didn't think so. Now we're going to create two more. One of those is going to be init. And another is going to be post init. Now, the names of these methods don't actually matter. You can name them whatever you want. Just make sure you have this, uh, these, uh, these arguments. Because if you don't, they're not going to recognize them as our thingy into what's its. Okay, so that's, that's the basic setup of the uh, starting class. We've still got a little bit to go. So, let's just run the game to test it. You run the game by going up here and clicking the uh, the run button, which can be found in the, uh, the top left corner here. And, once that's run, it'll run. It's quite simple, yet a complicated concept, if you think about it. But, anyway, that's not what we're here to discuss. Now, let's see, we should get to the main menu, and you can see five mods are loaded instead of four. We've got the default Minecraft, MCP, Forge Mod Loader, Forge, and finally, Tutorial Mod. And get out of here, music. Nobody wants to hear you. There we go. I'm not rude. Trust me. You'll also see stuff is being pulled in from our uh, mcmod.info file over here, which is just fantastic because that's what we have it for. So. Now that we can guarantee, or at least clarify, or at least declare, or clare, or say, that our mod is showing up in the game, we have done it, so far at least, correctly. Now, uh, we're going to create the easier vari variable first here, and this one's pretty simple, it's just a public static not final instance, and it has the annotation instance. So Forge is going to go ahead and create this. It uh, Because it's public and static, it can access it and all that fun stuff. Now it'll just go ahead and create the variable of instance once our mod is initialized. Now the funner um, thing. Uh, we got proxies now. So proxies, I'm going to actually store in a separate um, package, but I am going to copy the whole name. If you've gone ahead and created it, you can right click and refactor, rename, you can copy it right from there. I'm going to go into mod info. I'm going to put public static final string proxy underscore base. I'm going to put that in there. So if we ever move it, we can just come in here and tell it where the proxies are. Now we're going to have a public static uh, common proxy. We'll just call this proxy. Now it's going to have an annotation of side proxy. Now our client side is going to be mod info dot proxy base plus dot client proxy. And our server side is going to be mod info dot proxy base plus dot server proxy. So that's the easy way. Well, I mean, there's not another way. So 
you want to make sure all your stuff's imported here. And in this proxy, we're going to want to create a new, uh, new, um, new class. We're going to call it Common Proxy. And go ahead and go into here. You can just make sure to import that. Oh, another thing. I'm going to set up a formatter so it doesn't put these weird, ugly spaces inside of my import groups. I'm just going to create a new default blank lines between import. Nope, that's. Uh, it doesn't matter. There we go. Apply, save, apply. There we go. That's much better. So, now, inside of our proxy, we're going to want to have all the same methods. Well, we don't have to, but I want to, and I can't really be stopped. So, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste the methods and remove the event handler declaration. Now we're going to copy our common proxy and call it client proxy. Client proxy is going to extend common proxy. Very, very handy. And we're going to say super inside of the preint dot preentity super dot entity and super dot post in it e like that. Fairly simple, is it not? Now, we're just going to copy client proxy, we're going to call it server proxy. We don't really have to do anything in any of these at the moment. Now, inside of our main preinit, we're going to call proxy.preinity, proxy.entity, and proxy.postentity. Now this is going to go ahead and call preinit in the client proxy, server proxy, and common proxy, but client proxy is only executed on the client, the server proxy is only executed on the server, and the common proxy is executed on both. So you see here, if we call preinit, because we have client side and server side set up, it's going to call either one of those. It can't call both or common proxies. So this calls super.preinit, which means you're going to go ahead and call this method when you get called. So you're calling the common from either of those. It's complicated yet simple. If you understand basic Java inheritance, it probably wouldn't be too complicated. So if you're confused by anything I'm doing, look up a Java tutorial and get some basics. Uh, it really does help you understand. Now if we run the game, we should actually notice a whole lot of nothing different. But we've got a proxy set up. So next episode, when we get into items and such, we can create the uh, renderer on the client, which means you won't have a renderer on the server, and thus servers won't crash. Which, that is generally what you go for in life, creating a program that doesn't crash. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and leave a like, and if you enjoy my content, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.